Hi guys, welcome to this little tutorial. Um, I am uh, going to show you here in Boss Tone Studio for the uh, GT100 how you can assign um, effects to your patches that you've created. And you can basically assign all kinds of effects and parameters to be turned either on or off or change from one parameter to another. So it's basically just going to it's it's going to allow you to uh, to customize and you know set up your patches the way that you you ultimately uh, need them to be or function. So I'm just going to show you here in in Tone Studio so so you can do it the same way here. Um, let's just say that I like to start from scratch when I do something. So let me just show you here. Let's say that I'm going to build a patch, okay? And I just selected the patch over here, um, but I don't want to use any of the settings that are in here. So I want to initialize or clear the patch here so I can start from the bottom and build it up again. Because all of these settings are uh, none of which I need to use. Um, because when you're building a patch from the bottom and up, you you basically you're looking for another sound. So I'm going to press clear, and as you see here, that the patch will be initialized. So we're going to do that, and right there, it just took out all of the effects from before, and um, you know, now we have a clean patch. Then we can build up from the bottom here. So a couple of things that I'd like to point out before we get into this. Right over here, we have the input. And um, if you're, you know, if you're connected your GT1 here, you're pro probably also connected your your guitar, so you probably also have a set of monitors or your headphones on, so you can actually hear your changes as you play. Um, you can press the input here, and you can see the input level. And many people or players don't really know. Uh, what to do with this so they, they basically just leave it at zero you know they basically just leave it where it is um, by default here you know at zero db but in order to you know get the most out of your gt100 and being able to not clip or distort the unit um, also known as you know digital distortion causing the unit to clip because you're sending too hot of a signal from your guitar into the input of the GT100. So you will have to have to do what's called input calibrate your GT100. And uh, there are a couple of videos on YouTube which shows in great detail what you need to do. Um, so as the very first thing, pause this video, go ahead and watch the input calibration video so you know what you have to do because you know, you might have a Fender guitar and you might have a Gibson guitar, and those guitars are definitely not the same. Um, one guitar might have, you know, hotter pickups, and the other might have um, pickups with lower output volume. So you have to compensate for that. But you can always, you know, you can also go in and, and change the output level. But go to YouTube, type in uh, Boss GT100 input calibration, and I believe you have uh, two videos to choose from, so just watch the videos and uh, you'll get a clear view on what you have to do. So as you can see here, mine is set to, to minus 8 dB because that's where, um, that's where I landed when I set mine because I wasn't getting the, the red light uh, when I played. So minus 8 dB for me is fine. You also, you know... You want to always make sure that your output select is correct. Of course, when you're connected to a computer, you have connected it via your USB, so it will automatically go to line phones. But keep in mind that if you're, um, if you're using your GC100 with an amplifier and you're just using it uh, straight in front, so you're basically you're using your amplifier as your your bass sound for your clean sounds and overdrive sounds, and you're only using the GT100 for effects. 
keep in mind that it might not be that good of an idea to set up patches this way because it will when you have selected the line phones here it will automatically enable the um, the built-in speaker uh, and uh, amp simulations in the uh, tone studio here so just keep that in mind you might be better off uh, by you know operating the unit itself um, or at least you could you could always you know hook it up still here to your computer uh, connect your guitar to the input and depending on if you're running a mono or stereo signal you can always you know run the outputs from your GT out to your amplifier so you could basically you know go about creating your patches here on the computer in the tone studio but you would still have the sound of your amplifier so you would just have to you know turn the amplifiers on in here and maybe you know set your output select to however you have uh, connected your guitar to your amplifier and the GT1 100 here to the amplifier so you could do it like that too but most people tend to use it with headphones and straight into the studio here so I just just want to clear those things out at first because if you have everything set up um, and not having done the input calibration and made sure that the output select is correct then you're going to get a very different sound than what you're looking for and depending on what equipment you're going to hook it up to uh, next time it might sound completely different and even you know worse than when you created the patch so okay enough talking here but i just felt like it was important um so we've just initialized the patch here and um for me this is fine because i always use the built-in amplifiers from the gt100 here so i'm just going to select the amplifier that i like to use and um, i like the sound of the clean twin and i like to you know put in or um, set my uh, my eqs and whatever to to the things that i like so um, i'm going to do that um, and we just, you know, you can adjust the settings out here and, uh, you know, just basically set them to to whatever you like. Okay, guys, as I said here, I've just, you know, I've selected the preamp that I'm going to use and um, you can scroll through the rest of the menus up here, um, but I'm just going to, to go to the speaker type and um, I'd like to change it uh, from the original to the uh, two times 12 inch speakers um, and I don't know I just I like the sound of of, of that speaker emulation there and um, I just I spent a little time scrolling through the different types here and just you know sorted out the um, um, the options that I like the most here and I like the two times 12 um, so this is basically what I I do to uh, you know get the bass sound here and you know let's just say that this is a patch that I have going uh, so I'm just going to set up a few things that I might have in that patch so it could be a stereo compressor and um, it could be some reverb here with the level up a little bit um, and you know it might it might be um, could be a chorus also for example um, it could be the stereo chorus just fun here and um, so yeah this could be you know a basic patch that I would that I would use so this could be a um, a clean patch here for me so let's just say I have uh, you know I have a song in mind here and the song starts out with a clean intro with some chorus and compression here and uh, this kind of layout goes on through the verse but when we get to the um, you know when we get to the uh, chorus for example we need to change a couple of things so we might need to change the chorus here we might want to turn it off we might want to add in an overdrive because we need a, a more overdriven sound and uh, 
we might want to add in some delay, for example. So the way we're going to do this is that we're going to go to the CTL EXP here, we're going to click it, and um, as you see here, we have a couple of options and a lot of different foot switches that we can assign things to. And we have our eight assigns here. So let's just say here that, um, as I said, we want to change a couple of things. So right here, let's just say that we want to, you know, we want to assign it to the Excel control switch here. And uh, we have to choose the function that we want. And uh, let's just, you know, if you want an overdrive, for example, we're going to scroll down here and we select the overdrive as the function. And it's going to be off, but when we press it, it's going to turn the, uh, the overdrive on. And be sure to set this to toggle. Because if you set it at momentary, the effect is go only going to be on when you have the foot switch depressed. Um, and from here, remember that, for example, we also wanted to uh, turn off the chorus and uh, turn on a delay. So we'll go to our first available sign. We'll have to turn it on. And we'll have to make sure that the source is corresponding to the um, you know to the matching foot switch so by having it here we just set it to excel and control and um, that corresponds with what we have have over here and it's going to toggle and we have to select the category so let's just say that we want it to you know, we want a delay to be turned on. So you want to scroll so you see the delay. And right here, click it. It's going to turn it on off, and you don't have to do any more to that. But we also wanted to have the chorus turned off here. So we activate a new assign here. Make sure that it's still the right source. It's toggle. And right now we're going to scroll till we see the chorus. And it's right there. So you click that. And right now it's just set to, you know, turn it on off. So when we press it, it's going to take out the chorus here. Um, so I actually have my GT100 hooked up here. So when I press it, it should actually do what I've just assigned. So let's see. I press the actual control switch now. And as you can see here, the things changed. We now have the delay on here. The chorus is no longer on. We have the overdrive. And we basically got what we needed. If I press it back again, we're going back to the old setting. So, you know, quite an easy way to set up your, your uh, effects and patch changes here. Um, another thing. You can use the phrase loop pedal as an assigned foot switch to a controlled foot switch. And the way you would do that is that you would turn on the assign, you would go to the source and scroll up here, and you would have to be sure to choose the P loop pedal, which is the phrase loop pedal, and make it toggle, and you know, select the parameter that you want it to. You know, control here. So I can, you know, I can scroll down and find whatever I need. And uh, this could, let's just say, it's going to turn on FX number two here. So when I press the um, the phrase loop pedal here, I should have the FX number two light up. And it does. Press it again, it's going to go off. So, you know, we have a clean sound, compression, chorus, reverb, and um, if I press the um, excellent control, it's going to take out the chorus, add a delay, add an overdrive. If I press my phrase loop, it's going to take in that effects number two. 
So basically a nice little way to set up a sign to you. And it's, it can be quite handy because you might need to assign something that um, is a little bit out of the ordinary. And the GT100 just allows you to do that. And uh, that's why I use the Boss products. And um, I like it for that because it just gives you endless possibilities to, to shape your sound to basically what you need here. So, um, yes, right off the bat here, this is um, a good way to do it. Of course, you can always do it manually on the unit itself, but a lot of people prefer to use the Boss Tones too. So, um, I believe this will be it for now, guys. Um, thanks for watching and stopping by here, and um, thanks for the great support that you've shown. And um, as always, if you have comments or questions, requests, anything like that, uh, for something that you would like me to show you regarding the GT100 or any of the other multi effects processors, um, I'll be happy to do so, and I'll see if I can get that arranged. Um, so drop a comment, uh, subscribe, like this video, share it, um, and uh, I'll just I'll keep my content coming. So um, thanks for watching now, guys, and uh, I'll see you very soon.